Yeah. So let's start with the game from late last night. Yeah. Kings Warriors. Yeah. In two great games, the Kings outplayed the Warriors down the struts and lit the beam. And in game two, Draymond showed how rattled Golden State was getting ejected for a WWE style stomp. Okay. First of all, great energy. Great job. Second of all, look at the beam. I look see, at the I beam see. that they're putting. This is why you should watch on YouTube. For these added elements. All right, go ahead and ask the question. Will this young team be the be the one to end the Warriors old man dynasty? Okay. The answer is yes. And that's big picture. That's macro. Let's go micro. How is this happening? Why are the Kings up to nothing? Well, and this is where I'm sorry. But I've got to throw some shade, if I may. Throw some not, shade. Oh, you didn't like me using that no, term? No, I wasn't All a right. fan. I got to throw a little shade at not. I think basketball podcasters actually do a really good job of watching the entire league. I don't know that many sports TV folks, such as myself, I don't know how many of them were actually watching the Kings this year. I know I was, and I know that's why I picked the Kings to win the series. That's why I said the idea that playing the Kings in round one is some grand prize. Now, is it better than playing the Suns in round one? I did believe that. But the idea that the Kings were just going to be walked all over, you hadn't watched them. This offense is undeniably historically great. You then add to the fact that De'Aaron Fox this year was the most clutch player in the sport by a couple standard deviations, but massively leading the rest of the sport in clutch points, field goal, all of it. You then add to the fact that for this particular matchup, why is this matchup so bad for the Warriors? Well, a couple of reasons. One is who coaches the Kings? Mike Brown. Where was he? Golden State. So what does he know? All the Warriors' tricks. What actions they're going to try to run. What, what their counters are going to be. You then add this fact. The Warriors were a historically awful road team. So the idea that the Warriors were going to fall down 0-2, a lot of people could have seen that coming. Well, Nick, is it now going to be 2-2 after four games? Is next we're in Golden State? Maybe. However, the Kings this year, better on the road than at home because offense travels. The Kings this year, I know people always say defense travels, great offense travels everywhere. The Kings this year, the best road team in the entire Western Conference. So, why, why, if, if the Kings have all those things going for them, why were they just the three seed? Well, their defense was terrible. But what was terrible about their defense? Their rim protection. Guess what the Warriors don't do? Attack the basket. All those reasons, this is a terrible matchup for Golden State. The Kings can shoot with them. That's how they won game one. And they won game two by locking in defensively forcing some tough shots, and then once again, both of these games were tied with a few minutes left, and in both of these games, the Kings out-executed Golden State down the stretch. So that's the big picture, macro. Now we get smaller. Draymond yesterday. So Draymond can't help himself. And his explanation after the game did not help his cause. When he's like, well, what do you want? He didn't say it was an accident. I slipped. I was just trying to get, he said, what do you want me to do? They keep grabbing me. Which coming from Draymond is rich, considering in game one, we saw him lay on DeMontis Sabonis to try to get the Warriors a fast break. The idea that because Sabonis was holding his ankle, you can stomp him like that is an absurdity. And Draymond might have cost them that game. He got a flagrant two and then was ejected. Do they win if he plays? I don't know. 
but they have a better chance if he plays because they don't trust Kaminga. They don't trust Poole. Looney was in foul trouble. So that then leads to some really good questions long-term and short-term about Draymond. So go ahead, Diora. What do you think this means for his future? Well, he might be suspended for game three. I believe what he did is suspendable. I don't think, given his history, he can get any benefit of the doubt. And I know they might say, well, we threw him out of game two, so do we really need to suspend him? I think an intentional, full-force stomp on a player's chest is a suspendable offense. So that's the short-term future. The long-term future is, and I said this two weeks ago, but nobody wanted to listen, and now, and I guess I should take this as a compliment, but I don't. When I say things on TV and on this podcast, and then a week, 10 days, two weeks later, I turn on the competing sports television network, and I see what I said is their topic. But with like, hey, could this be Draymond's last series with the Warriors? Of course it could be. I think it will be. He has a player option after this year. I believe if he opts in, then obviously he's got another year with him. But I think he's going to opt out and ask for a new deal. And I do not think Golden State's going to give it to him. The year can't start with Draymond sucker punching a teammate and then come close to ending with him being thrown out of a playoff game for a cheap shot. And all throughout the middle, the team's mediocre because they can't win road games because they can't defend because their emotional leader, Draymond, has lost his authority to lead because he sucker punched a teammate and he's not as effective defensively as he once was and then say, yeah, that's a guy. I want to give $100 million to into his mid to late 30s. Not going to happen. So the Warriors, as we know them, are, I believe, in their final days. Steph will be there. Clay will be there. Wiggins will be there. Poole, even if they don't want him there, is going to be there. But that core, Steph, Clay, Draymond, They went to six finals. They won four titles. I think they have about 10 days left together. And I think we're going to see the final game that they play together. It's going to happen in Northern California, either in uh, their arena or in the Kings arena here in the next 10, 12 days. And it's going to be one of the major storylines of the summer. You have one more follow-up I see in the rundown. Go ahead. Do you think the Kings are the Jags of the NBA? For me, it is a very interesting thing. They're not my favorite team, but I do actually respect them the way the rest of the media refuse to. Also, similarly, I picked the Jags, who were the home team in round one of the playoffs, the home underdog to beat the Chargers. They did that, I. but then I said their story was going to end because the next round they were playing my team, the Kansas City Chiefs. The Kings are the home team playing, but they're the underdogs playing the Warriors. I picked them, but the next round they're playing my team for the time being, the Lakers, and I will pick against them there. So there's a lot of, a lot of similarities. So yes or no? For me, kind of, the Kings have a beam, the Jags have a prince, and light the damn beam. Look at that beam, Diora. Look at it. And the beam we have in studio on television today is going to be glorious. I guess there are some similarities there as well. For the Jags, I brought in the trumpeters. For the Kings, we bought an industrial-sized beam. It's great. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.